audio. Come on. You can do it. I see us live. I think we're good. I mean, I see my, yeah, I see us live. Okay, good. It's muted. I guess Twitch learned to mute yourself because I would click and it would be loud. And it scares me. And then I get the email th and I get nervous. Like, what's this email here? Okay. 260. 268. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here in the N30 Network. This is episode 268. And we're going to try a really ambitious topic that we will... I, hey, I don't want to say we're going to fail at. Let's be let's be realistic. We're going to do great at, and we can do it again if not because hey, we control everything. So uh, this episode two sixty eight, we're going to talk about software patents. So there's a lot to talk about. I don't know if we can get it in thirty minutes, but let's introduce Tom. Tom's there. Hello. He's saying hi. And before we start, if we do a terrible job and you want to complain to us, we have a signal group. Just find us, message us. Um, you can tweet at the show, at in30. You can find us, you can talk to us, comment in the YouTube comments or Twitch, we'll get you in, and we can go from there. Because if we mess up, we can clarify it there. You want to talk to us about anything else, we have it there. But I guess we should dive right in, and uh, I'm gonna let, let's start with, what is a software patent? Tom, do you know what a software patent is? Uh, generally things that make people's lives harder for virtually no benefit to anyone. That's, that's a lie. That's a complete fabrication. Uh, I just need to say something incendiary uh, to get people's attention. So, <laughs> patents in general are a way of protecting an idea or invention that might not necessarily be protectable, right? If you think about physical inventions, like if you were making something, uh, some kind of object to bolt onto the side of other objects, maybe through like an axle uh, or, or something like that to help move heavier objects along the ground easier. And you made some kind of circular object, like maybe the wheel, and you wanted to, to patent it, right? You wanted to say, well, I'm the inventor of the almighty wheel. So I would like a nickel from everybody who decides to use this particular invention. Now, because the wheel is, is obvious, right, to, to us in the modern age, um, it wouldn't be patentable today, but back in the day when it was a completely brand new bleeding edge piece of technology, you could patent the wheel because just by looking at it, you know exactly how to make one, right? You take some stone, you shape it into a circle, you put a hole in the middle of it, you attach an axle, you're done. Um, and a lot of inventions today, physical inventions, do follow that same kind of process, right? If somebody were to crack open the side of a case and look inside, they could figure out how to rebuild your thing. So how do you incentivize inventors to keep inventing uh, if somebody's just going to rip off the side of their invention and copy the thing for free anyway? Well, that's what patents are here well, to do. Let's give another simple one. People, There's two ones I'm thinking of. First is the process of making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So my wife, who's an attorney, has said this is like law school 101 on patent law. And the first thing is how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You get the two pieces of bread, you spread some peanut butter, you spread some jelly, you put it there. Yes, at the time that was pat that was a patent, and somebody owns the patent to the peanut butter and the process of making. The other patent that that gets that gets thrown around is uh, the the toilet paper patent because people always argue on does the toilet paper go above the roll or below ben behind the roll, and the answer is it goes on top of the roll because that's how the patent was set. I guess it was the method of, of rolling up paper on a cardboard to on some sort of tube in the bathroom or something like that. So somebody said, this is our process of making and we don't want you to steal it because we want to do it. We came up with it. We want to make money on it. So the US Patent Trademark Office says, 
you're right. We we don't want other people to steal this idea and this research and development that you did. So therefore, we're going to I'll issue you this patent so you can use. And if someone we're going to say infringes on it, you can sue them. So software patents are basically like the copyright law for physical things. Uh, now, physical things can be covered under copyright. Frankly, the intersection of copyright law, patent law, and trademark law are all kind of like adjacent, and there's some overlap between them. We're not going to get into that today. It's honestly a pretty in-depth and really dry and boring legal topic. But uh, copyright originally was designed to incentivize uh, creatives to keep creating, right? Just just like if you're an author and you wrote a book, then somebody said, oh, wow, look at this great book. I'm going to copy it and sell a million copies. Why would the original author feel incentivized to go make something again if it's just going to get you know, ripped off and printed by a bunch of different people who are unrelated to the author? They're not going to see a penny. So copyright law allowed uh, governments and society to say, okay, this particular work is protected, is, is the, you know, the sole uh, the the sole what am I trying to say here? It, it, its sole owner is the original creator, right? Is the original author of that work, and only they have the rights to reproduce and redistribute this work. Cool. So now we've established kind of what patents are for. Now, applying patent on physical processes and physical inventions, and very much things in the physical world, we had to bring that into the modern era, and that's kind of where software patent became thing. Now it's weird, it's, it doesn't exactly map over one-to-one, -one, and honestly it's that kind of issue with this break between the physical and digital worlds where software patents kind of sort of fall apart and they don't really translate too well. Like, you know, how, how could you describe an invention if you've never built it or used it? And software allows you to do that. You can describe a thing in a software patent that you yourself have never actually built or used which is kind of odd. And then there are things, uh, as, as we're going to call them patent trolls, which are uh, entities who are not utilizing the patents in their portfolio. They're not actually building with them. They're not building on top of them. They're not developing them. They're literally just sitting on the ideas and sitting on the patents and the rights to use those patents and suing people who do. Uh, they are a non-practicing entity. Or patent. So the example, let's let's go back to the peanut butter sandwich. So you make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich patent, uh, and you have your machines and so, and everything else. And your neighbor says, "Hmm, my that's a good way of doing it. I'm going to do it." And you hold up your patent and you say, "Hey, I got this. Stop, or I'll sue you." And you go to court and you say, "Well, I'm using this patent. This is what I'm using." What a patent troll does is they say, "Hey, if we buy it," and then your neighbor says. Well, I want to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You're literally not using it. You are not doing anything with it. Can I do it? And their answer is no, pay us. And it's like, but you're not doing anything with it. You're not making money off it. You're just stopping me from doing it. And I can, that's the key word. You are stopping me from bringing some peanut butter and jelly goodness to the world because you want whatever it is, a dollar a sandwich or whatever licensing fee or whatever you're going to charge me to do it. And, and that's where in the last, th this is where it's become very much a software, a problem for software patents, hard, not hardware patents, but non-software patents, general, general invention ideas have patent trolls, but they're not as prolific, at, at least I don't think as, as software patent trolls. Yeah. So and, and the, okay. one of the main issues with, uh, with software patents is. This idea of objects, right? Like, uh, if, if you had, right, like, slices of ham and slices of cheese, slices of bread, and you said, I'm going to patent a way to put all of these things together, throw them in a pan, and make a melty, delicious ham and cheese sandwich. You wouldn't be able to do that today under, under most judges and uh, most investigations of, uh, you know, patent officers at the United States Patent Office um, because it fails the obvious test, right? If somebody looks at those ingredients, looks at a hot pan, they're going to say, well, of course we can make hot ham and cheese. We have all the stuff here, right? That's not really a patentable thing because it's a really easy leap of logic to make the, the next step. 
And that's kind of what, what prevents people from saying, well, okay, you have a patent on the wheel, but what if we put treads on it? But what, what, if we, what if we made not just one single hole, we put a single hole and then like four other holes where we can even further fasten the wheel together. Now, this is probably a terrible example. Those things probably have patents on them for their own, you know, style of fasteners or treads or whatever, but stick with me. Um, software, because it's kind of a weird field, because not everyone is introduced all the time to the idea of how to build and software, it has issues with this obviousness test where, uh, whereas, you know, something like we on this show, we literally live in the world of software each and every day. Our, our jobs either involve, you know, teaching people about the process of creating software or actually, you know, doing the act of building programs and applications. Um, so the obviousness to of, hey, I'm going to make a, a list of data objects and I'm going to link them together into this single object. Like, okay, cool, it's, it's a linked list. That's obvious to us, right? We, we know what that data structure is. We've seen it a hundred million times. But somebody who's not from our world, the obviousness is going to evade them, right? It's not going to be as easy as, oh yeah, this is literally in every 101 textbook ever on the subject of data structures. It's a link, right? Somebody without any prior knowledge in this field isn't going to come to the same conclusion. So already we've got a little bit of disconnect between general patent issuance and application and the world of software development being you know, pretty specialized. Well, wait, let me ask you this. The, 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 I'm, I think that there's a patent on the MP3. It's just not enforced. So the idea of taking, taking uncompressed audio from an analog thing, there's probably a patent on the digital, the analog to digital, but the MP3 of compressing by cutting off the low and the high end frequencies and repackaging as a much smaller file is probably there's probably an mp3 patent i'm not 100 percent on that and and there is the, the owner of it has, there is the owner of it has on the public domain which is a different story but the owner has the right to enforce this and say you did this now i don't know how obvious it is to a normal person to say we're going to take this we're going to go from this uh, sound to the to the to the audio to the digital wave the digital frequencies and then cut off the lows and the highs and repackage it so most people would say oh that that sounds very impressive i can't do that therefore it is so that person can enforce it so then somebody says well i can do it in a better way that's the same size and and gets this and gets better quality well now they can patent that and they go back and forth and they figure out which is whose is who. But in general, MP3 has a patent. WMA is Microsoft's patent. I think AAC is Apple's patent. Um, FLAC is another one. OG OGG is the open source patent that Wikipedia uh, that Wikimedia uses. But I'm I'm sure that is that could also be patented. And it's all the same way to do something. So the obvious test that you were saying before, is it obvious to do this? No, I don't think most people would have thought it's obvious. Now it's obvious. I teach it. I, I, I teach it. I think now it's obvious, but these patents still exist. And, and this is kind of where prior art comes, right? So if you had the wheel, you got the patent for the wheel, uh, but then Bob next door is just like, hey, I, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but... Like, I was also building a stone circle to attach to my carts to run them down the road. Um, I, don't, I don't think your patent is valid, because I clearly made it before. There's prior art here. I've been selling uh, wagon circle stones for years. And, you know, in, in a system where the patent office does work, that would be invalid, right? You, your patent for the wheel would be marked invalid, because there's clear prior art, you know, years ago. Bob was building, uh, you know, wheels to throw on the sides of wagons forever, and he just didn't patent it. You don't get that right. He would, or whoever is deemed to be the first inventor of the wheel would, right? Uh, in terms of like MP3 versus G versus C versus Wave versus like all these other technologies, it generally comes down to prior art. But it's not necessarily that oh, you just invented a better MP3, we're not going to give you a patent on that. It has to be really specific. Like, MP3 uses a very specific type of compression technology to encode audio and decode audio to get it back out. Um, and AAC does it in a 
you know, similar but different way that's got, you know, benefits and detriments compared to MP3 or any other library or any other codec there. Um, so it does have to be very specific. It has to, you know, not have prior art. It has to be non-obvious. There's, there's pretty stringent limitations on patents, or there should be. Um, but software, because it's kind of muddy and you don't necessarily have to uh, produce a working invention, right? You don't have to uh, produce a, a wheel. Uh, when you show the patent office, you just got to write down your ideas and say, yeah, this is a thing. You, you have to have no demonstration of producing the art you are claiming to. I mean, let's go with the two big ones that probably everyone knows. Apple had two patents that they sued Samsung over. One with one of them was the the screen to, the, the the swipe to unlock. So on the screen, you had your rectangular screen. Um, they also had the patent on the display on a rectangular screen. And the other one that they sued Samsung over is the rubber band back. So if you're on some sort of list like your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed and you got to the bottom, it banded it up when you held your finger to it. And and you and when you hear this, you say, wait a second. That seems very, very obvious. Now, because you were we were using it for three or four years prior. But back back three, four years before that, the idea to unlock your phone, we didn't have that. So the patent office said, this sounds pretty impressive, the method to unlock it by putting your finger and swiping it. We didn't have touch screens like that. We had to use a stylus. So Apple was granted that patent and they were suing and the eventuality was Samsung did lose and was ordered to pay a lot of money. I don't know if they ever paid it, but they went back and forth and this and that and the other thing. But but there's a lot of these, you could say, well, that now seems obvious. Well, it wasn't obvious at the time. So the way you, the way you fight this, if somebody says, well, it's, it's now obvious now, you have to show what we call prior art. And what Tom said was uh, something prior to that. And the famous one that people showed is the actual chain thing on the door. And they would show the little, wait, we slid to unlock on the door, like the bathroom door. The problem is that's hardware and it didn't translate to software. And there's a whole bunch of other things. I am not a I am I, I am not a patent attorney. I don't know the exact details, but the idea is there. You have to show the the prior art. And why are we saying all this? Because we I want to go into what happens if so. What what do these patent trolls do? So the very first thing that these patent trolls do is they have this patent and they see who's infringing on this. So they find and they say, oh, you're infringing on my peanut butter and jelly making sandwiches or Bob is infringing on the wheel. Give me money. And then Bob or the person says, well, okay, I'll give you money, but you're not using it. Well, we don't care that we're not using it. We just want to stop you from using it. So pay us. And so somebody said, so what they say is give us $25,000 or, or whatever it is, some smallish amount of money, or we won't sue you. So a lot of these companies say, here's $25,000, just get out of my way and I can go. The problem is if you're small and, and you're, you're not, you don't have 20, you don't have the, the ability to fight. You say, fine, I'll make $25,000. So the really famous one that we're, that we're going to talk about is uh, the episodic patent, the, the software distribution of an episodic content of content, also known as a podcast has been patented by some patent troll. Somebody made the patent, they were issued it, they were given to us. Somebody can come to us and say, hey, in 30, you're violating this patent, pay us money. And we say, well, we don't make any money, so we would we would stop the show. I mean, I'm not, we're not gonna fight this, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna pay them money. We would stop it, we don't make any money on the show. But Adam Carolla was famous for this and um, said, wait, I'm the number one podcast right now. Um, we're going to fight this. And the, and the, 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 the company said, what you're going to fight this. Y yeah. I'm going to ask my, I'm going to ask my viewers for money and we're going to raise the money to fight this. Now, the thing is how much does it cost to fight? Well, you have to hire lawyers and everything else. And people basically say it's about a million dollars to fight one of the, whether it's a software pirate or a real patent, it's about a million Generally dollars to fight it. Yeah. It's about a million dollars yeah. and you so, may not win. So generally, if if you're like faced with 
do I want to pay 25 grand to this person who I'm not sure has a valid legal claim? Like 20, 25,000 bucks versus a million. That's a pretty wide jump. And frankly, if you're a small company, like if this, if this weren't our, our, you know, podcast show we do for free and put it on the internet for everybody to enjoy without any ads or, or getting like any, any kind of monetary benefit out of it. Right. If we were faced with that and, and shutting it down, cool. That's, that's easy calculus. But if we're running a company, right, if this is our livelihood and we get faced with, well, we could pay a million dollar bill, which we're not guaranteed on, on getting out of this, right? We, it could be that the, the patent is actually valid and we still owe that money, but now we have a million dollars in legal fees and our opponent's legal fees. So that's like two million plus whatever we had to pay originally, which they're not going to be so nice and they're going to charge us whatever they want. Um, or doing the 25K thing right now, it's, it's a shakedown. It's quite literally a shakedown. But when it comes to business and finances, yeah, you, just, you just pay the 25K and you say, whatever, cost of doing business, there are bad actors out there, and you eat it. It's immoral. It's wrong. Uh, it's illegal in many cases, but uh, yeah, people are going to do it. This is, yeah, and, and this is paying, paying the ransomware. You shouldn't pay the ransomware. You shouldn't, you shouldn't engage in them. But at the end of the day, it is cheaper to pay the ransomware than to, through the insurance than to fight it from backups and everything else. It's the same idea. So, so Adam Carolla amassed his minions and they fought the patent based on prior art because we've been doing episodic content for, I want to say hundreds of years. I mean, since the newspaper was born. I mean, they've had episodic content. It wasn't digital, but the idea, it, it's not that revolutionary or it fails the obvious test. So eventually, Adam Carolla, with, through, through help of the EFF, because remember, this patrol was also suing CBS and NBC and anybody who was set, showing episodic content, and they were getting all this money. Eventually, when they heard that Adam Carolla was suing, they said, uh-oh, we don't really have a claim. Can we stop it? And Adam Carolla said, no, we're going to fight you on this. They eventually won. Um, or Adam Carolla's Adam Carolla won. And that, that podcast, that, that patent was deemed invalid. And now we're able to do our podcast without being worried about being sued and everything else. Um, there is another patent and, and we were going to get Drew Curtis on. He runs the website, fark.com, F A R K.com. If you've, if you're if you're our age, you know about it. If you're a few years younger, think of Reddit, but before Reddit. And he got sued for essentially the same thing: the the aggregation of links on in a list on a website. And again, they were going after Yahoo and MSN. He fought it, if, and he won. If this patent sounds overly broad, and like you could literally sue every single website ever created on the history of the planet Earth, you are exactly correct. So, so yeah, and and we wanted to get him on. We'll get him on at some point to talk about this because he loves to talk about it. But basically, his thing was you sue for... Um, I just forgot what it was. The infringement. Did you really infringe on the patent? That that was the key. They have to prove that you did exactly what the patent said you did, and there was zero deviation uh, beyond almost a reasonable. I think it's be, it's not probable cause. I think it's beyond a reasonable. That it's a very high standard. The problem is it's going to cost you a million dollars. So he. He fought it and won. And there are other examples. Newegg has always fought uh, their patents, uh, the patent trolls, and they have won um, a lot. And and the, again, the problem is that it, it's going to cost a significant amount of money, but people go after and they sue all the time. So what is a company supposed to do? Well, now what they're doing is they're amassing patents. So if you can't sue you don't have a million dollars to sue but you have this other patent to say well uh well if you sue me on this patent i'm gonna sue you on this other patent and then they're gonna go back and forth well i have this third patent and it goes back and forth till sometime so be, and you're never gonna use them you're just buying them for uh what we call the patents and for the biggest example was google bought motorola and then sold it five or six years later but they didn't sell the patents 
And they claim, and they've held to it since, that they're not going to use those patents to sue anybody. They're using it as a defense for themselves. So if somebody comes out and says, wait, we have the patent of dialing a 10-digit number that rings you on the other side, which I'm sure is also a patent, uh, uh, they could say, we're Motorola. We started the cell phone. We have the first cell phone. So we control every every patent that deals with the cell phone. So, and 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 they've gone from there. Um, you may know about this one, Intel it, and AMD. It's important to... Intel... Uh-huh. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it it's important, it's to, important to understand that, um, that patents do have an expert. Right, like like modern copyright law has been, you know, kind of blown up, and it's now, you know, a whole bunch of years, like over over the majority of, well, I don't want to say majority, over uh, a sizable amount of human lifespans in terms of copyright protection, and then a company can buy that, and it's the company's lifespan, and it's the disnification of copyright law. But luckily, patents haven't fallen to that particular trap. Generally, in the United States, patents are uh, generally this is, I'm not a lawyer, more importantly, I'm not your lawyer, but generally last for 20 years. They do expire, and once they're expired, anybody can make that wheel, anybody can craft that delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwich without having to worry about infringing anything. So, and you're right on that, and that's what they're hoping, that's when you, hear, same thing with drugs. When drugs come out of patents, you can make generics and everything else. So with the five minutes left, I want to bring about, so if you're, how do you fight this and what the collective good of the internet is trying to do, at least against the patent trolls? We don't want, we don't want to stop a hardworking individual who actually did something good to get the money that they deserve. That's not who we're trying to go after. We don't want to go after somebody who developed a really patents, awesome patents idea. Are not evil. They're they're protect yeah, they pens, protect pens the little guy. We're, we're just we're just mad at the people who buy them up, don't use them. That's the key, and use it maliciously to sue others. So, a cloud uh, there was, Cloudflare. There was at, one company. Oh. There was uh there was one company. I I apologize for the weirdness. There's a little bit of a delay on my end. We're we're having some issues <laughs> layering the audio right now. Um, but there's one company that actually uh, bought a, turns out it was a bogus patent, but they bought a patent on uh, copying papers with multifunction stand-up office devices. Basically, they copyrighted the idea of small businesses using a Xerox machine. So they actually paid a few lawyers in a few different jurisdictions to walk around area businesses, and if they saw a Xerox machine or other kind of copier in the business, they would send them a summons later and say, you are infringing this patent to copy papers with a copier that you bought and are using. Uh, and they would go around and demand, you know, anywhere from five to $10,000 from each of these small businesses until somebody took them to court and, you know, invalidated the patent. Uh, but it, it did take an individual standing up and saying, no, we're going to put a stop to, to this grift. We're going to put a stop to you, you know, basically shaking people down. Uh, illegally and yeah it's it's kind of a nasty situation so that's kind of what has to happen today to get rid of like bad patents and some patent trolls but not not all of them at all so cloudflare got sued and and they're using the idea so the the two there's a few ways but we talked about um that you're not really infringing on it. The other way is to find prior art. Find somebody else that was doing it before you got the patent. Because you can't exert that you owned it if somebody else was doing it before. So they put out a call uh, for papers or call for help. And they came up with this uh, project Django. And I'll link this in the show notes. And basically what they're saying is help us find prior art. Here are the patents that either we want to we want to protect the good of people. Now, Cloudflare is a private company. They're, they also have a self-interest. But in general, they've, they've, they've been a stand-up model company, at least as far as of this recording. I haven't heard too many anything really negative about Cloudflare. And they're saying, hey, uh, we want to help the other 
other ones. We want to find these stupid patents that people are getting sued over, and we want to try and help people and validate them by finding uh, prior art. So they're putting out they're putting out rewards like bug bounties and saying, "Hey, if you this is what we need. If you can find this, we will pay you money." And they're also building a fund to help uh, to help the small businesses, the small, the little people uh, fight these these patent trolls and try and invalidate patents. And they have, and they're actually doing. It's not like one or two; it's it's multiples. I don't want to say it's a hundred of them. But it's probably five or ten. But these are probably the biggest ones that are that, like you said, the going around lawyers, going to different uh, offices and suing people over standing at a Xerox machine and, 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 and suing them for that. So kudos on them. And we want to thank them for that. Or I do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really kind of disheartening to, you know, be reliant on individuals like Drew or companies like Cloudflare who need to go out and squash the patent trolls. And, and frankly, uh, especially there's a, there's a lot of interesting kind of solutions coming from other countries in terms of patentability. Some countries have you know completely avoided this problem by just saying, yeah, you can't patent software. Sorry, it's just not a thing. I don't exactly know where I fall in this debate. I, I think we we do lose something. Uh, by not having the ability to patent software, but the obviousness of a, of a patent is an issue. The prior art, uh, and generally the, the process of issuing a patent, I think is kind of problematic. Um, right? Like it's, it's not like the, the U.S. Patent Office is just saying, oh, you created the wheel, we totally believe you, there's, there's no homework we have to do, here's your patent. It's not like that. They, they go through a lot of work to be able to you know, do research and award patents uh, validly, right? There's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot more rejected patent applications than there are approved. I'll, I'll put it that way. But there are definite issues with the system that need to be tightened up. Otherwise, yeah, the kind of, you know, legal grifters of society are going to keep running roughshod over completely normal people and businesses just trying to do work, right? It's not like every patent enforcement action is bad. There's, uh, pr more good examples than there are of uh, bad actors abusing the system, but currently those bad actors are kind of a blight on this industry, and I, I would like to see this problem solved. So I want to get a little more into this. So uh, uh, this company, this uh, patent troll, I just lost the name, on the Project Django site, Blackbird, Blackbird Ventures or whatever it is, they, they sued Cloudflare over something. So Cloudflare created this Project Django to go after every single one of Blackbird's patents, literally every single one. And they have they they hold the patent on an internet-based resource retrieval system, basically a search database. They have the patent on illuminated product packaging. So having light emanating from a box to entice customers is a patent. They have one on the pocket, a sports bra having an uh, integral storage pouch. That's a patent. And so they're, so they're saying, hey, we'll, like we said, we'll give you money to do, to, to do this. And again, it's not that they're trying to sell a sports bra uh, as their company to make money and going after people who are infringing on it. They're saying, we're holding this. And if you do it, we're going to sue you. If your box... If your product packaging contains some way of emanating light and whatever the definition of light means, we're going to sue you. If you create a database that's searchable on the internet, um, we are going to sue you for that. We're not going to do anything with it, but we're going to sue you for it. So, so, so One thing took that... this a little, go ahead. One thing that um, some some companies and individuals are looking at right now is uh, curtailing what kind of rights a non-practicing entity, right? So if you're if you're sitting on a mountain of patent, like some patent troll dragon, but you're not actually using them, uh, people are, are investigating. You know, what would the landscape look like if the law were changed to prevent those you know dragon style patent trolls that are just sitting on a pile of unused patents? What would the world look like if we prevented them from suing people over others utilizing the patents that they are not? Um, and it's it's an interesting concept. Uh, it does 
change the market in fairly fundamental ways uh, as my, my phone goes off. So I apologize about that. But it, it does change the market in some fairly fundamental ways because it's not it's not like, you know, people sitting on patents that they aren't using is rare. It's actually fairly. Common. I mean, we have it's it's again, this is a very small subset of the population and and it this this the problem the problem with what you're saying is that if somebody does want to start something or has this and they want to enforce something that's legitimate you're 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 declawing them from doing it and oh and then somebody said well can we isn't there a patent to the patent to fight the patent trolls like is there a patent on the patent trolls that you can use and no you cannot get a patent to store other people's to purchase other people's patents for use in a malicious way in a I, monetary secret. I way. am hereby announcing my intention to make a patent, to patent the idea of being a fad sat dragon with no friends. There, it is now illegal to be a patent. So, okay, I, I think our audio problems are only getting worse at this point, so it's, it's best that we end, but hopefully we described a little bit of what's going on. Uh, I, we don't want to get too in-depth because, we, again, not lawyers. We don't even play one on TV or on a podcast. So we just want to get you the idea so you can look at these and, and see what's going on. And, and hopefully we can do a deeper dive later. If you have questions, join the signal group. But other than that, uh, I, I, I hope that we conveyed that. So with that said, we will hopefully see you next week and have a good night, everybody. See ya. Okay. Hey, that.